What's going on and welcome to the Wilburn Gold Show. This is episode 7, although I wish it was either episode 8 or episode 24 uh, because if you have, I mean obviously we all know by now uh, that Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, uh, and seven others were killed this past Sunday in a helicopter crash up in Calabasas, California, like not even 30 minutes out of LA from what I heard. Um, you know, three days have passed, it's Wednesday, and, you know, I'll just kind of give you my initial moment of finding out. Um, I was with my buddy Patrick and his girlfriend Crystal, and, uh, we had just come back from the grocery store, and we walked into his house, we were getting ready to make some chili, because that's what we do on Sundays, we make chili, and... It's one of those things where you're like scrolling through Instagram or social media or whatever and it's like you're noticing but you're not like completely locked in. So like I kept seeing Kobe Bryant's picture like it, it's almost like you're in your phone but you're also kind of in like a conversation elsewhere. So you're just kind of scrolling and I kept seeing Kobe Bryant's picture on Instagram but that wasn't uncommon because literally the day before, you know, he was already trending on social media with LeBron because LeBron James passed Kobe literally the night before uh, on the all-time scoring list. Kobe was three, LeBron was four, and LeBron leapfrogged him in that game in Philadelphia against the Sixers. And so I guess I just didn't think much of it. I wasn't paying attention to the captions. I just saw Kobe. Uh, so we go in the house, and um, I saw somebody post a picture of Kobe with heartbreak emojis. And I was like, huh? And then I saw another one with heartbreak emojis. And I'm like, wait a minute. That only happens when something terrible, usually death, has happened to somebody. But I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And then I saw another one that said... Kobe Bryant, uh, 1970. I forget the the day he was the date he was born. It was 1970 something to 2020, and then I saw another one that said Kobe killed in helicopter crash in Cal in California, and I'm thinking, okay, this is one of those fake. And then I saw TMZ was the one who reported it, and and even before that, like I'm like, people fake stuff like this. People have faked stuff like this before. You know, I remember one time uh, something popped up about Mark Hamill, the guy that played Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars movies, and it had a date uh, to 2019 because I think it happened last year. And then Mark Hamill came out and said, hey, I'm still here. Like, it was completely fake. And so I thought it was something like that because it's just like, it's Kobe. That, like, Kobe literally was just passed on the all-time scoring list like that it's Kobe that, that no that's not right and so but then I guess something in my gut told me like but it might I don't know so I just I went to Twitter and you know because Twitter it's it's the water cooler of our society it's what people are talking about so I go to Twitter uh, Twitter wasn't responding at first, so I rebooted my phone, got back on Twitter, and sure enough, I went to trends, and all 20 was Kobe. R.I.P. Kobe. God, no, Kobe. And I thought, shit, this happened. So I read the reports, and TMZ was the initial uh, report on it that Kobe had gone down in a helicopter crash it was initially reported that it was him and four others i don't know if it was him and five others or five total but i'm pretty sure it was five total including him the initial report and it was just like it happened so fast like and you know it's the most cliche thing in the world but it, it's true. When people say, you are not promised tomorrow, 
that was like a prime example, point blank. You, no matter who you are, what you do, what you've done, what you have, you're not promised tomorrow. It can be gone just like that. Because it was gone just like that. And it's like, the fact that it was somebody of that, I mean, every life is important, but the fact that it was somebody of that magnitude, that fast, as if there was not a care given to who it was, but it was his time to go, That's that hits something. And, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and pretend I was a Kobe fan because I'm not. Um, you know, when it's come to the great basketball players that we look at, you know, your Michael Jordans, your Kobe's, your LeBron's, your Steph Curry's, and things of that nature, I've always been on the LeBron side of that spectrum, and he's always the guy that I've... I've admired and kind of favored most in that conversation but you know and in fact I'll even go as far as to say I really didn't like Kobe out Kobe was one of those people he was one of those types of players that unless you were rooting for him or the Lakers you kind of didn't like him because he played for that he played with that edge and he played uh not dirty he just played with that edge where he same with Michael Jordan I didn't get to witness it with Michael Jordan. I did with Kobe uh, for the second half of his career because uh, I was in elementary school when he was kind of just beginning to smell his prime. Um, he played with that edge to where if you weren't rooting for him or his team, you didn't really like him because he just kind of got under your skin a little bit. And that was Kobe. That's just how he played. And But something, something about players like that and especially over the last couple of days, as I've heard other people kind of describe him and his style of play that way. Over time, you might not like him on the court, but they they earn your respect because it's just like they play with that relentless edge. And so, you know, now I will say this, um, you know, as you can see back here, I like collectibles, Star Wars collectibles, sports memorabilia, things of that nature. And I will say this, um, I have a few little sports figurines, you know, the one where it's like a, it's like a freeze frame. It, you know, for example, I've got uh, Masahiro Tanaka right here. My first one of these, like a figurine and a freeze frame, was of Kobe. when Back when he had, you know, that the semi he had the hair going he was number eight um it was him with his tongue out you know he was dribbling he was making a move uh and actually i really wanted to have that for today's episode but i forgot it back uh at home at my parents house one of any sport any player any team first one um and so that's kind of what i think about with kobe I, you know like i said i wasn't a fan of his but I've come to admire him for his work ethic and I I admire his Mamba mentality because at the end of the day Mamba mentality is about I mean Kobe was one of the best at what he did but he trained he practiced he prepared like he was the fucking worst and that's something to be said about who Kobe was you know because and here's another thing Kobe, he wasn't so much about being the best at basketball. He wasn't so much about being the best at making film and telling stories. That guy was about legacy. He was about something bigger than all of this. Now, in doing that, he did strive to be the best at basketball and storytelling. And everything he did, including, and we can't forget, you know, his daughter Gianna went down with him, uh, which makes it even worse, um, you know, one of the other people of and it was confirmed it came out i uh, kind of got off on a tangent it came out that there was nine total including the pilot kobe gianna and six others um one of those who another thing that resonated with me another one uh was 
I forget his name, and I'm not going to attempt to say it and pronounce it off the top of my head because I'll butcher it, uh, but the guy that was the baseball coach, he was a he was Orange County College ba uh, head baseball coach. I don't know if that's a JUCO, uh, but I know he's a legendary JUCO. That's short for junior college or a two-year school um, head coach, and that resonated with me because you know, I played my first two seasons of college baseball at a high school, uh, at a junior college, and so that kind of hit me a little bit. But anyway, um, you know, the fact that Gianna was with him, it made it worse, but at the same time, it almost made sense. The fact that she was with him, not in a good way, obviously, but it made sense because they were always together, you know. And that's kind of what I was getting to. Kobe was the strived to be the best at basketball, strived to be the best storyteller, best in content. He won an Oscar for Dear Basketball. If you haven't seen that, now is the perfect time to go watch it because it really will hit it, strike a nerve with you. Um, and he strived to be the best dad of four girls. You know, we've all seen it by now because the clips have gone viral at this point. You know, people saying, "Oh, you gotta have a boy. You gotta have a boy to continue the legacy." And she and Gianna goes, "Uh, uh, I got this." That and, and, and Kobe loved. From what I've heard over the last couple of days, Kobe loved being a girl dad. Like he loved it. And you know, I've often heard there's nothing manlier than that. You know, a, a father's relationship with his daughter. I haven't experienced that yet at this point because I'm still fairly young. But um. Yeah, Kobe was about legacy. He was about something bigger than himself. He was about something bigger than what it was he did, whether it was basketball, storytelling, being a dad. He was about something bigger. He was about legacy. He was about, and, and you can feel it because his energy stretched over the whole world. And you've really felt that over the last couple of days, that ripple effect. That's what he's about, legacy. Something bigger than himself. And, you know, you, all, you often hear, you know, one person can't boil the ocean or you can't boil the ocean. Kobe didn't buy that because you can. You can't do it all at one time, but one thing, one person, one thing at a time, you can make that difference. And Kobe taught us that. And that... Of the many lessons that he taught us while he was here for 41 years, one could argue that his last lesson on this earth to teach us was legacy. Showing us that with the willpower, with the mental toughness and focus and preparation, you can make a difference. You can reach the world. When you do it in your way that you're meant to do, prepare the work ethic, put in the work. When you strive for legacy as opposed to money or something in the short term, but you're for something bigger, you're for the big picture, you're for the legacy, that can send a shockwave through the whole world. And I think that was Kobe's last lesson to us. Thanks for watching.